welcome to this week's edition of ETV News. I'm Danny Fountain. And I'm Zach Watson. The Cooking Channel was in hot water yesterday after posting an insensitive tweet about the Exxon Valdez disaster. The tweet shown here reads, Exxon Valdez crashed this day in 1989. See the oils that are good to spell all over salad. The tweet was removed, but the Cooking Channel has yet to release a statement. A horrific murder in Florida leaves two young brothers dead. Pasco County sheriffs say a 13-year-old shot and killed his 6-year-old brother in what they believe was an argument over food. The teen then shot his 16-year-old brother before turning the gun on himself. The boy's guardians were not home at the time. Officers, officers have not said where the weapons were kept in the home or who owned it. The 16-year-old was taken to the hospital and is, and is expected to be okay. Hazing has been an ep epidemic across the United States for many years now. The, Uni the University of Dartmouth College has stirred up attention over the past few days for all the wrong reasons. Frat House Alpha Delta is being accused of branding students who wish to be members. This Ivy League college says that the frat is already under suspension due to violating alcohol rules. The school has increased the suspension of Alpha Delta in the light of the branding allegations. This frat is not some second-rate brotherhood. In fact, it was one of the inspirations from Jim, Jim Belushi's famous movie, Animal House. Underage drinking, hazing, and hosting unregistered parties have been occurring in this frat for some time now. These branding allegations could possibly tarnish the Greek life reputation even more. A, crazy, a pretty crazy story coming from Boston tonight about a person that was pinned underneath a train at downtown Boston MBTA station Wednesday afternoon. MBTA spokesperson Joe Pezzaturo said a person was pinned under a red line train going outbound at downtown Crossing after falling off the platform around 2.30 p.m. Boston Fire said crews responded to a scene that required them to use specific tools, including heavy-duty jacks, in order to free the conscious person. The person was taken to Tufts Medical Center and is in stable condition, according to the Boston Fire Department. According to Newtown officials, this past Tuesday, the Connecticut home of Adam Lanza, the man who was responsible for the 2012 massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School, has been demolished. The two-acre lot where the 3,100-square-foot house once stood will be left as open space under a plan approved by town officials. Many of, the, many of the neighbors asked the Lanza home to be destroyed because it served as a reminder of the terrible tragedy that occurred in December of 2012. One neighbor even wrote a letter that said, Not only is the property a constant reminder of the evil that were cited here, those of us who walk, run, drive, or otherwise must pass it multiple times a day are having a hard time moving on. Everything in the house from rugs, furniture, to memorabilia has been removed before the home was torn down. There is a warning about a complicated phone scam targeting the Hispanic population here in Hartford. The scam involves a call from someone who says they have your loved one, and unless you give them money, they claim they will kill that person. Hartford police says that dozens of families have been victimized in the last few weeks, including three this Tuesday. In many cases, the scammers have personal information. Police also say the crooks have been gun targeting people who were recently arrested. So keep a lookout for your friends and family. Have you seen a solar eclipse? Have you tried taking a picture of someone during a solar eclipse? Rutger Paul did and, did, and against all odds, the picture was a success. Paul, who is from Scotland, was able to capture his friend Danny Masakil riding his bike off a jump at the exact moment the solar eclipse struck right behind him. Paul, Masakil, and their team of photographers and videographers spent many days sitting up at the correct location on the Isle of Skye, Scotland. When the exciting moment occurred, Masakil said, Oh my goodness, I can't believe it came out. It was the biggest eclipse that Bryn has witnessed in 16 years. According to the India Book of Records, two-year-old Dali Shivani Sharuki set a new national record in archery. Dali is the youngest Indian to score more than 200 points at a trial event report the Press Trust of India. If that wasn't impressive enough, she fired 36 arrows at five meters away, then again at seven meters away, concluding in a total of 388 points. Archery Association of India went on to quote, we are very proud of her. We are very impressed, unquote. She has been training since birth uh, to become champion, said her father, Sharuki. Uh, Dolly turns three next week. An inspiring story coming from the White House. As a leader of the free world, President Obama has a lot on his plate, but he still took the time out out of his day to help a little girl in need. Eight-year-old Kate Osmer wrote to the president asking for help making friends. She says she thought he may have some sound advice because he works with so many different people. 
Well, she not only got a letter back, she and her family also got tickets to the White House egg hunt and a personal tour from the president's family. And we'll be right back with this week's editorial. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I'm Yvonne Pineda, and I'm here with this week's editorial. So it's spring now, and what does that mean for us here at Eastern? Well, first off, we don't like we don't have to walk in the freezing cold. There's less slush on the ground, and we get to enjoy being outside in the nice, warm sunshine. I woke up this morning to the sounds of birds chirping for the first time in months. That was an absolutely beautiful moment. I didn't realize how much I missed the sound of birds and actually seeing grass on the ground and even seeing ladybugs all over. It's the little things like this that make spring such a wonderful season. Everything has a new beginning. Both Mother Nature and us humans can start new again. I've been working on myself recently and setting personal goals for this spring. I figure since spring is, since spring everything can grow new again, why can't I? I encourage students to go out and make a change in your life. It can be a little thing or something big. Either way, it's important to get rid of the things in our lives that bring us down or that doesn't help us blossom. With this new season, we should all, have to, we should all try to improve ourselves for the better. Maybe you have to let go of things that hold you back in your life, or maybe you, have, you can have a change of scenery. Do something that helps you grow as a person. You can go out and make new friends, make memories together, and just enjoy life. For me, I made a goal this spring to be more open to meeting new people, and I've also let go of many things that were not good for me. I believe it's extremely important for people to work for, on themselves. Everyone should be at peace in his or her own life. We're here to support and be here for one another, and I encourage everyone to be kind and have a gentle soul. Life can throw us difficult situations, but it's important to maintain a good and gentle soul. We should all have friends that can be there for us in difficult times, and with people who truly care and support you, anything can be possible. In life, we all make mistakes, but really, that's what life is about, making mistakes and learning from them. Sometimes life gets too hectic for us, and we aren't able to appreciate the little things. Sometimes we should just stop and take a break, like enjoy reading a book on a Sunday morning with coffee, or writing in a journal, or writing poems, for you can truly express what you feel. Instead of trying to change the world all at once, we should be the ones to change ourselves. Then everything will fall into place. It, better days will always come, and it's important to take things one day at a time, and always remember to live fully and peacefully. 
That's it for today. Have a great weekend. And as always, stay amazing, Eastern. Now we can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We rope it up. Cause we know how to jump. We we'll roll it out. Roll it out. Cause we know how to skate. We'll cut it down. We'll cut it down. We'll cut it down. We'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We rope it up. Cause we know how to jump. We we'll roll it out. Roll it out. Cause we know how to skate. We'll cut it down. We we'll cut it down. We we'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. Yeah, you know that we can. Yeah, we'll come on. Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Cause we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Cause we know how to play. We'll drop it down. We'll drop it down. Cause we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. We'll veg it up. Night and day. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. All in together now. We can make it better now. Better now. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but, but he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. Oh. Mom. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. On Monday, March 30th, the Music Society will be holding an open mic coffee house in the Student Center Cafe. This event is an open mic with a coffee house vibe and provides the opportunity for musicians at ECSU to share their talent, meet, and collaborate with other students and performers. This event starts at 6.30 p.m. and is free and open to the public. This month, Eastern was one of 87 schools nationwide to receive a Student Actions Award for the Fall 2014 semester from the My Actions Organization, a group that encourages college students to participate in sustainable behaviors. Sophomore Lauren Polanski, a My Actions intern, encouraged her peers to participate in a sustainable actions like uh, using uh, reusable water bottles, unplugging appliances, and using the stairs instead of the elevator. Good job keeping it green, Eastern. Stargazers, get ready. Eastern's own Wickware Planetarium will host a free star show on March 30th at 5.30 p.m. Learn about the stars, constellations, and planets at this fun and educational show. Seating is limited, so be sure to request your seats on the Eastern website. This upcoming Monday in the Student Center Cafe, Music Society hosts Jazz Night with the Straight, straight Up Jazz Band. The band plays a mix of jazz genres, including Latin, classical jazz, blues, and swing. The event will celebrate returning from spring break. It is free for students and starts at 7.30 p.m. Attention all seniors, the Senior Brunch will be held this Sunday, March 29th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Betty Tipton Room. There will be great food and beverages provided. This is a great time for all seniors to come together as the semester starts to come to an end. This event is free for all seniors and a valid student ID is required. The Career Fair Prep will be held Monday, March 30th and Tuesday, March 31st in the Wood Support Services Center. This is a chance for students to set up mock interviews and have their resumes critiqued so they are prepared for the Spring Career and Internship Fair, which will take place April 1st. The event will take place on the second floor of Wood Services from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. On April 1st in the Betty Timpton Room, Eastern will, have, will be having a guest from the White House to present the Cesar Chavez Distinguished Service Awards. Julie Savage Rodriguez is the granddaughter of Cesar Chavez and Deputy Director of the White House's Office of Public Engagement, and she will be giving the awards to those individuals who are recognized for their actions that demonstrate distinguished service in the promoting the Latino community. Three awards will be presented, one each to a member of the faculty or staff, a student, and a member of the community at large. The ceremony will be taking place at 3 p.m. Admission is free, and the event is open to the public. Seniors, commencement is right around the corner. 
33 school days to be exact, and that means graduation countdown has begun. The countdown will begin Saturday at 6 at Blarney's, where there will be food, free food, music, and raffle prizes. After Blarney's, wake up on a Sunday to a free brunch in the BTR from 11 to 1. All this leads up to senior trip to Mohegan on Friday, April 17th. Tickets are $10 and are on sale now. But that's not all. We're joined by Matt with weather. Good evening and welcome to ETV's five-day forecast. Let's see what's happening outside your window. Today was a high of 52 and a low of 39. Partly, I'm sorry, it was raining all day today. It's going to be doing the same tomorrow. It's going to be a high of 48 and a low of 30. So you might want to break out those rain jackets tomorrow. Guys, I know you don't want to hear this. We thought it was all gone. Scattered snowstorms all day Saturday. But luckily, it's only 50%. It's going to be a high of 38 and a low of 20. Coming along Sunday, though, it's going to be sunny skies. So hopefully all that snow won't even last a few days. It's going to be a high of 47 and a low of 31. Coming along Monday with those Monday blues, it's going to be a high of 51 and a low of 33. More rain, though. It's going to be wet here in Willie. That's all I have here today. We'll be right back with this exciting week of sports with Bobby Reed. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. It's harder whenever there's a bigger group. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked. Um, thrown up against a wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. So, I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Good evening, Eastern. My name is Bobby Reed with your sports update. Eastern men's lacrosse came out strong against Wheaton College last night. The Warriors taking a 4-1 to one lead in the first quarter. In the second and third, however, they stalled and were only able to score a single goal, while the Wheaton scored nine. The war Warriors, unable to come back, lost 14-8. to eight. At 2 p.m. on March 28th, the men will face Southern Maine here at Eastern. Eastern Women's Lacrosse traveled to Bridgeport State last Tuesday. The Lady Warriors fell back, fell back, excuse me, fell behind Bridgewater by three points after the first half, but came back strong in the second. However, the Warriors just couldn't overtake Bridgewater and lost 11 to 10. Now the women will travel to Rhode Island College on the 28th to begin their Little East Conference season. Last Tuesday, mixed martial arts learned that they may never see a Frank Mir Brock Lesnar rubber match, nor Brock Lesnar's second run at the UFC heavyweight title. The five and three former UFC heavyweight champion announced on ESPN that he had decided to turn down the offer that UFC ex extended him. Lesnar decided to resign with the w re resign with the WWE and continue his professional wrestling career. Although Lesnar still wants to compete and fight, he cites his past illnesses and intense training camps to his reason not wanting to. 
He expressed in an interview that he is happy with his decision and that he has closed the door on his mixed martial arts career. A few weeks ago, I reported that the Manny, pa that Manny, pa uh, excuse me, Manny Pacquiao and Mayweather will meet on May 2nd at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. In that report, I said the purse for that fight was expected to be a record-breaking $2 million. With a little over six weeks till the fight, you can add another $1 million to that purse. Between the $72 million gate and the projected $3 million domestic pay-per-view sales alone, and many other revenue sources, the two fighters are looking at splitting a $3 million purse, Mayweather getting 60% and Pacquiao getting 40%. Many of us fight fans are hoping that this fight will be a 36-minute war, or at least worth the $100 pay-per-view price. Finally tonight, on March 7th, the first ever Northwest Regional Quidditch Championship was held in Tualka, Washington, just north of Seattle. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, what is Quidditch? And if you are, and if you are, excuse me, and if you are, it means you've never read the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling, or like myself, you two are a muggle. Quidditch is a sport that is best described as a mix between basketball, rugby, and field hockey, where uh, players ride a broomstick held between their legs as if they were riding it like a wizard. Varsity team, the Axons from Boise, Idaho, defeated the Western Washington Willers with a score of 140-40, to 40, allowing them to advance to the Quidditch World Cup in Rock Hill, South Carolina, on April 11th. That's all for sports this week. My name is Bobby Reed. Have a good night. That's it for this week's show. If you want to see more episodes, visit the ETV YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next week. Good night, Eastern.